Guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about camera tilt on FPV aircraft. And we're gonna explain everything from the smaller ones, like you'd fly indoors, what we call tiny whoops. We're gonna do some explanations of cine whoop style camera tilt, as well as some FPV racing and freestyle drones. And we're gonna do some long range FPV larger seven and 10 inch classification drones for camera tilt in different scenarios. And as a bonus, we're also gonna do some fixed wing camera tilt. Every single aircraft that you see here has different types of tilt and different reasons for different types of tilt. So if you're brand new to FPV, this is gonna be a great tutorial because by the end of this video, you're gonna have a better understanding of what camera tilt's all about, depending on which type of aircraft and flying style. Every pilot has a different flying style, so everyone's flying different tilts. We could really go down the rabbit hole in this video, but I wanna keep this as simple as possible in this camera tilt tutorial, so that by the end of the video, you do have a good understanding of what camera tilt is all about in the FPV hobby. Let's go ahead and get started with the first of the category, Tiny Whoops. The first category that we're gonna talk about is tiny whoops, but the first subcategory before we even get into adjustable tiltable cameras is fixed position cameras. And these cameras are mounted into the quad frame. You'll notice that they don't have adjustable bolts on each side of the camera. When you buy one of these types of little tiny whoops, a lot of times they come in a bind and fly. Sometimes they come in the cheaper ones and it is non-adjustable. So it is a fixed position camera, but they have a very large field of view on these cameras, and most of these cameras are running 5.8, and they're well over 160 degrees field of view. So it'll give you, you know, almost around 180 here. So it has such a large field of view that it doesn't really need it, and you're not really flying these very fast through the house. They're generally, typically slow flyer, beginner types of tiny whoops with fixed position cameras. And this is another example of a fixed position tiny whoop. This is one of my favorites. This is the Meteor 75, a very fun a little quad, and you really don't need any different type of camera tilt on this one, unless you really wanna fly mock speed. Now we're moving on to the next category, which is tiny whoops. This is the adjustable tiny whoop class, and if you are an ultimate beginner, this is where you wanna start out. You wanna start out at zero degrees tilt, because zero degrees tilt will fly slower than if you're flying 15 degrees or 10 degrees even. The higher you go in tilt, the faster the quad will go. Uh, if you do it zero degree tilt to start, you will see the front of the quad, you'll see the prop guards in your FPV view, but you'll able, you're kind of able to slow down and kind of skirt through gaps and, and go through smaller spaces. Uh, at first, it'll just be way easier for you and it'll almost feel like you're just hovering in place. Now, as you get into something like Tiny Whoop Racing, there used to be a multi-GP class, I'm sure there's still one, but once you get into racing, guys tend to bring their camera tilt up on their whoops, loosen the two screws on the side. You can see this one has two screws that are adjustable. And once you get your desired tilt, the higher you go, and this one will almost give me like 35 degrees tilt here at the very top of this frame. And once you do that, when you fly, the quad will be at its maximum speed right around the maximum tilt of the camera. So this is gonna give you the fastest type of tiny whoop performance and the fastest speed. Again, if you're a beginner, just tilt it all the way down to level at about zero degrees, tighten up those two bolts, and you'll be good to go as a beginner. And as you learn, you can bring that camera angle up and fly a little bit faster at a time as you go. The next class quadcopters that we're looking at is the micro brushless category. And these quads typically don't have prop guards like their little brothers, the tiny whoops have. These guys have open props on the outside, usually come in a squashed or X configuration. Sometimes they incorporate prop guards, but mostly they don't have them, mainly because people that fly these outside really wanna fly them a lot like a five inch and do some acro training with these, learn how to fly acro and do FPV freestyle maneuvers. Also, they do have micro races as well. So depending on what quad you get, will kind of dictate the amount of tilt that you can get out of a camera. Now this one is the lighting one. This was one of my favorite quads from 2023 because it was so much fun on 2S. Uh, around a 2S450 will get you about eight minutes flight time on this. And it really does feel like a five inch, dare I say. Uh, one of the fastest and funnest 
quads that I've flown uh, for a long time as far as the micro brushless series quads go. But you can start this one out with a pretty low tilt around 10% down at the bottom and go all the way up to about 25% tilt here on this quad. And if you're flying outdoors, typically your outdoor micro brushless range will be anywhere from say 15% to 35% tilt. And the higher you go with the camera, the faster your quad's gonna go. And if you're trying to spot a power loop, and you're coming back around from a big loop, some people like a little more tilt so they can see behind, kind of further ahead as you're coming back around from a big loop and back down and around. The next class up is the Cinewoop class. And typically people are buying these for making cinema videos. They're flying indoor real estate videos with these and getting beautiful results. And they're also flying some mild freestyle. I, I don't really consider these FPV freestyle type drones. They're more made for flying smooth. And one of the reasons that they fly smooth is because a lot of them come with the inverted motors, which clears up the airflow underneath the frame. You don't get all the prop wash coming through the frame like you do vertical mounted upward facing motors. So there's a little difference there. And if you start out with about five to 10 degrees tilt right here, or maybe even right at dead level, if you're flying through a house or you're flying indoors, that's what we recommend. When you go outside, if you wanna fly faster, you're going to be able to tilt it up to about around 25 to 30 degrees on the maximum tilt on this quad and that's going to let you fly faster to do like mountain bike chases say if you're chasing somebody on a snowboard uh, action sports and things like that drift car races people do use these for that uh, these are anywhere from 4s battery up to a 6s battery depending on what size cinema whoop you get they do make much larger ones and they even make smaller two inch ones like the GEP RC Dark Star. But the Cinewoop category is all about flying slow and most people, the majority of people out there are flying from zero to 15% camera tilt on a Cinewoop. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move into the five inch FPV freestyle and FPV racing drone category. And this is where people typically fly anywhere from 20 to 35% camera tilt uh, and when I'm talking about percentage and camera tilts if we come down to zero again you're going to be at the horizontal level where the camera is pointing straight ahead and as you come up it depends on the amount of tilt as you tilt your camera up so right now I have about 25 to 30 percent camera tilt right here it is in line with the quad frame and sometimes that's how these FPV freestyle drones will come from the factory but probably the, the most popular camera tilt out there for FPV freestyle would be anywhere from 25 degrees up to about 35 degrees tilt I've heard of people flying higher uh, but that's getting a little bit crazy and ridiculous now there is some instances where you would fly a five inch fpv freestyle drone at zero percent tilt um, and what what scenario would that be um, if you're flying at zero percent tilt on your five inch fpv freestyle drone you're typically flying 3d props like zoe fpv when zoe fpv flies with her quad I'm 100% sure that she's using zero tilt in the camera because she is going inverted with the camera at times. Um, she could be using 20% one way, 20% the other, but I'm pretty sure she's flying at zero tilt. Uh, very interesting concept because everything goes out the window and changes once you fly your quad upside down and right side up in 3D mode with 3D propellers, a lot changes. But again, the most typical percentage that people are flying in FPV racing and freestyle is anywhere from 25 to 35 percent and sometimes with FPV racing they're pushing a little more around uh, the top end of the percentage rate at around 35 to 40 percent even. Now if you put a GoPro on top of your five inch racing quad or any other quad out there I'm just going to give you a quick explanation of how to get the right tilt for your quad. Now Sometimes you see videos where people are flying and the top gets cut off of the video because they're, they have too much tilt in their quad and they're pointing too far at the ground uh, beyond their line of sight here with the top of their camera. So what you need to do, if you have a more powerful quad, you can bring up your camera angle to around 25 to 30 degrees. And what you want to do at that point with that five inch freestyle drone or racing drone 
if you're racing with a camera, most people aren't. Uh, if you're doing FPV freestyle, if you've got a D-case camera like this or a GoPro, it's the same exact thing. So you can see this camera's at about 25% here. And what we wanna do is right now it's off. So if we were flying like this and the camera's pointed you know, say you put it on there like that, it's gonna be looking at the ground because the quad tilts up as you fly. So what you wanna do is match that up with the same angle that your camera's at and you will come home with some good looking video and you won't have the top cut off of your video. Uh, so many times I see people post videos on YouTube where the top end of their camera is cut off and kind of uh, seeing a lot less sky, seeing a lot more ground. So um, as you're making those maneuvers to get everything to film and look right, you want to match up your front of your camera with the angle of your GoPro. And now we're going to talk about long range FPV and the application of camera tilt for long range FPV. Now this is my GEP RC Crocodile 75 V3. You can see this camera has right around 25 degrees tilt or so. It's not super high. I can go a little bit higher if I want to. And like I mentioned before, the lower your camera goes, the slower you're gonna fly. Um, it's kind of like the uh, in in action sports, the way you're kind of looking is the direction you're gonna go. So the higher up you look, the higher angle your quad is able to achieve. So a lot of times I'm around 25% for long range FPV, but I feel like the typical range for long range FPV it tends to be higher because a lot of people like to be able to uh, fly faster, further, and quicker. Uh, they wanna fly further out. So what they're doing is they're raising their camera up to around 30 to 35 degrees to get the maximum tilt. There are two bolts on the side of most of the DJI-O3 cameras and we've got one here. So I'm just gonna loosen those up. And if I wanna fly faster, further, quicker, I raise it all the way up to uh, wow even to around 35 degrees right there for a maximum tilt and then you can see as you're flying you're going to be kind of making faster ground there uh, covering more ground there with a higher camera tilt now one tip though if you're out there and you just want to feel like you're covering a lot of space you can actually lower your camera angle down and what's interesting about that for long range fpv if you don't wanna go three miles out, but if you wanna feel like you did, sometimes what I do to trick myself is I lower my camera angle. And what that does is it puts me more in a cruise. Uh, I'm going slower, but I'm flying for longer close in. So it feels like I've gone a whole, a whole long distance. But then when I look at my OSD, I see I'm only, you know, say I'm two or 300 yards away from the home point. So it feels like you went a mile, but really you've only gone a quarter mile out. But typically for most people flying long range FPV, you wanna get a good amount of tilt in your quad from 30 to 35 degrees to cover a lot of ground really quickly. And now we're moving on to one of my favorite categories in FPV is the fixed wing category. Fixed wing aircraft have a lot of different types of airframes and they also have a lot of different types of mounts. Uh, you can just go on and on with the different types of mounts. There's head tracking, there's fixed position, there's adjustable, there's also different types of staging that they can give you in these kits. So the most common one out there we're gonna start out with is the fixed position FPV camera. And typically these are seen on a lot of smaller aircraft. This is my flying fish here that I absolutely love. It has an analog 5.8 Fox Ear camera up front and just with a little bit of hot glue and you hold it in place and that sets your camera angle. It's nothing fancy, no adjustable bolts or any staging on this one, just a little slot right in the front of the aircraft and you're pretty much ready to go. Now typically the angle that people get uh, set up for FPV planes and wings, it's usually going to be somewhere in the negative category down past horizontal. This one has such a wide field of view that I can get away with having it almost horizontal right here. So, uh, and typically we have about 10% uh, negative here down past horizontal, kind of almost like looking at the ground as you fly. And I'll show you a different example now. This is the Atom RC Penguin and it has two different types of camera setups on this one. They also give you two different hatches. They give you a staging area hatch, which is great for mounting servos if you want to do any type of head 
head tracking on here. I also had a 3D printed mount here for my old school DJI camera, which is adjustable with two screws on the side. And right here, I have just a little bit around, a little bit negative of horizontal. So right there, maybe negative five degrees pitch so that I'm kind of looking down at the front and the nose of the aircraft. For me, when I'm flying fixed wing FPV, probably my favorite thing is seeing the nose of the aircraft as I'm flying along. And the next type of mounts you might see in fixed wing kits are staging mounts. And this is an example of one of them. This is sort of uh, more of a, a horizontal camera angle tilt right here where you can mount a variety of different staging in here for cameras. They also have different angles for this staging. It comes out off this track and you can see that this one's pretty flat, but they also make some higher angle uh, to get a little bit lower look toward the ground. They also have a front point adjustable spot up front here in this one as well. So you can put two bolts and have your camera kind of hanging out the front here which doesn't give it quite as much protection, but it still does give you more tilt up or down. Most people, again, are flying zero to negative five to 10 degrees with fixed wing FPV. So those are all the basic categories that we have as far as camera tilt and FPV aircraft go. These are the typical percentages that most people are flying in each individual category. If I left something out of this video, feel free to make a comment down below. And uh, if it's a great comment, I'll pin it so that everybody can see it as far as your suggestion toward camera tilt. Because camera tilt really is, to me, it's kind of personal. And I'm sure it's personal to you too. If you're watching this video and you disagreed with me on a few things, it's possibly likely uh, because camera tilt is so personified uh, and it really depends on every different type of aircraft we even have those automatic tiltable gimbals like you see from dji but most case scenario in fpv we're using uh, kind of fixed position and adjustable type of cameras so hope you learned something today in this video if you did please become a patreon subscribe on the channel and click the like button so that the algorithm finds this video and pushes it higher up in the ranks but again, I appreciate you and I will see you on the next one.